Yes, it's true, Studio 1.6 has a video track. That's great news for everybody making film or video game music or post-production or of course anybody who creates videos for social media. And that's now so much more fun in Studio One version 6 because you can import as many video files as you want, move them on the timeline, cut and trim them and of course export the final video along with the mix down of your song. So let's just dive right into it. The video track is a new global track just like the marker track or the arranger track or the new lyrics track. It can be opened here in the toolbar if it's wide enough, otherwise you can always open this menu and select the video track. Importing video is very easy and works the same as with audio. You just drag one or more video files into your song either from the files tab in Studio One or from Explorer or Finder. Studio One can import all video formats that are supported by your operating system and for which you have the appropriate codecs installed. And as you can see, Studio One already starts generating thumbnails from your video files. That happens in the background, so you can already start working on your song while this process happens. If you're working with timecodes, make sure that the frame rate of your song matches the video. The quickest way to do that is by right-clicking and selecting Use Video Frame Rate in Timeline. Of course, most videos also have audio, so let's open the audio track. And Studio One asks us if we want to extract the audio part from the video. The video track has its own audio lane, so this is not a regular audio track in your song, but a special lane under the video track, which makes keeping both in sync very easy. Once Studio One has finished processing the whole file, you see these nice thumbnails and frame numbers in the video track. If you don't need frame numbers, you can turn them off, or if you don't even want to see the thumbnails, these can be turned off as well. What I really like about the new video track is how snappy and responsive it feels, no matter how large the video file is. Zooming video is extremely fast as well as any other kind of editing. You can move the video event on the timeline, cut it, trim it, copy, paste, duplicate, replace, slip, use ripple edit all the time and edit lock. And all of that editing is really instant, so it's really, really fun to use. As you can see, the audio event always moves with the video. That's usually what we want, but if you're working with several video and audio events, you might want to move them separately. In this case, we only need to disable link. And now we can move the video and the audio event stays in place. And by the way, if you don't need to edit the audio part, you can just hide this audio lane. And then the video track shows these mute and solo buttons and also the volume of the video. So if that's all you need, you can just collapse the audio lane and only expand it if you need more control, which I think is really handy. If you have a video that you need to sync to the audio of your song, maybe because it's a gig recording, you may like the tap to transient function that also works on the audio lane just as on any other audio track. Make sure that the audio track is selected And then you can hit the tab key to jump to the next detected transient. To get the video in sync with my song, let's find the first transient in the bass drum because that's the start of the song. I'm gonna create a marker here. And now we need to find the first transient in the video file. Here it is. And now just trim the event start to that position with the trim start to cursor command. Then select your marker, set the cursor to this position with the L shortcut. Now you select the event and press Ctrl or Command L to move it to this marker. And now these are both perfectly in sync. Of course that's been a few steps, but you could easily simplify this workflow with macros. Let me know in the comments if you like me to make another video on how to create macros for this. And then you can of course show or hide the video player and scrub through the video by hovering over the time display over the value that you like to change 
and then use the mouse wheel to skip forward or backward in seconds or milliseconds. Then make markers where you need them in the video. And that way it's really a lot of fun to compose or arrange to video. Or what you could also do, which is really cool, is making compilations or trying out different versions if you use scratch pads. And scratch pads really turn out extremely useful also for some of my work as a demo composer for instruments. Let's look at this example. Here I have recorded several different pieces of music with different presets of the instruments. The video that you see is actually the original footage from the camera. I used arranger sections to mark my favorite parts and I used different colors and then I went into the arranger track and selected my favorites here in the inspector and then I added a new scratch pad and just copied the arranger sections into this new scratch pad. And now I just need to use the remove gaps command in the event menu. And you see that this automatically cut out all the parts with video and with all the audio and instrument events and just inserted them here in the scratch pad. And now I could still tweak the audio fades, etc. Or if I wanted, I could still edit the notes of these performances. And now I just select everything, press Shift plus P to set my loop range. And then I choose Song and Export Video. And here I select Between Loop. I can even use the source codex if that's possible for this video format so that it doesn't need to be re-encoded again. And then hit OK to export the video and show it to your customers or import it into your video software to add effects and color grading and so on. So that's it for today. I hope I could give you an overview about the new video track in Studio One 6. If you want to see more videos on how I use the video track, please let me know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me to make more comprehensive Studio One videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.